So boys and girls, um, the last time we were together, we were learning about Gustav Klimt. And I'm wondering how many of you remember the things that we talked about. The first thing that we said was that he loved, do you remember? Gustav Klimt loved a robe. He loved to be comfortable. Do you see him there with his little scrolly designs on his shoulder? The next thing he loved, do you remember what we talked about? He said he loved a cat. How cute. There's even a book about him called Gustav and His Cat. But then we found out that the next thing he really loved was gold. We talked about how his dad had been a gold engraver and that he was influenced by all the little colors of gold and the shapes of gold that he would see in the things that his dad would, would engrave. The next thing we found out was that he loved Adele. There she is. And Adele was painted in this portrait here, which is why this painting is called, do you remember? The Portrait of Adele. And then we also saw that he painted a painting called The Kiss. And it was of these two people here together, our friend Gustav and his friend there. And that is the painting called The Kiss, where we see the rectangular designs and the circular designs. Finally, we talked about this one where the center of it is called The Tree of Life. And over here, we see the couple over here that is an embrace hugging. And then we see her. We're a little suspicious about her, not knowing if she is good or bad. Hopefully good. Now, boys and girls, today we are going to be taking the stamped papers that you did last week, and we are going to be embellishing them. You'll see that the table is set up long. I kind of like to think of it as my Thanksgiving table without turkey or plates or pencils or uh, utensils or cups but with paper with your name on it. You're gonna be going and flipping it over and you might find that yours is sort of like this where last week you got shapes on there but it's there's a lot of space in between or it could be that you're like this person where you got quite a bit of shapes on there. Regardless of what yours looks like, today you are going to be putting designs inside your shapes, beside and in between your shapes and along the edge. We're going to call that the border. So if we look at this person here, we'll see that they use the gold marker to make a swirl, and then they used a silver marker to make the little dots on there. On the table, there are going to be idea sheets, and these are the designs that we're going to be looking for because these are the ones we would see in Gustav Klimt's artwork. Do notice that uh, if you're tempted to write down Klimt, try these on your paper. Those are just words. We are not writing those words on our paper as a design. Note to self. Here we have someone else who did designs inside their shapes and outside of their shapes. Again here, really cool how they chose to leave some spaces blank. I love this right here with the, rect uh, with the triangles together. This person went the extra mile and did that real delicate design that Gustav Klimt liked to do where it looked like a vine. I'm just going to show you a few more here. Now this person for their border, they did kind of a thick silver line. This person here did a dash, dash, dash line over here. And this person here even tried to do that little vine as a border as well. Here's just another border um, our idea sheet that's going to be on the table. Here's a design that someone made here. I love how this person did a zigzag with a circle going there. And again, a swirl inside or concentric circles here. Really, really fun. Here we have someone who outlined the shape and then did designs inside the shape. And here is yet another idea sheet and some examples here. Now, boys and girls, at this table today, there are going to be a lot of different brands of metallic markers. There are going to be black and white markers. These are white paint pens, normal black Sharpies. But there are also going to be these sort of narrow white thin pens, which are called jelly roll pens. And they will make a very nice white thin line that will really pop on your artwork. 
So boys and girls, the pens you're going to be using today are very interesting. They're not cheap. They're kind of expensive. So I want to make sure that you know how to use them. Basically, in this section of the pen is the ink. Sometimes the ink needs to be stirred up. And so what they do is, if you can imagine with your x-ray vision, there being a little steel ball inside of here. That ball moves back and forth inside this barrel, keeping the paint mixed. I understand if you want to shake it, it feels good, it sounds good. You can shake it like five or six times, but then we need to do, be done. We can't do it all day long. And when you shake it, you need to keep the cap on. This is because the inside there is this little piece of, uh, it's almost like a very dense sponge. And what it does is it absorbs the ink that's in the barrel. This little piece though can come out and if you shake it with the cap off, there's a risk that this will come out and all of the ink will fall, flow out of the pen, therefore making it unusable. So please make sure that when you shake it, the cap is on. Next, you're going to notice that when you use the pen, it does a great job of leaving ink. But if you push really hard, you'll see that the tip goes up into the barrel you may not and should not push so hard that it does that. Otherwise, it just goobers all over your paper and again, it empties the ink out of the barrel. So I'm hoping you can remember to do that. Now, at the one Thanksgiving table way over here, you're gonna be doing using the metallic markers. Over here, we're gonna have a side project going on where you're gonna be painting a background. You're gonna notice that on the table there are gonna be papers, there's gonna be bowls with some paper towels for you to clean your brushes, there's going to be paint, and there's going to be brushes of different sizes. What you're going to do is you're gonna fold it in half. Some of you call this folding it hamburger. And when you uncrease it, you'll see that it opens up like this, and you now have a, a crease right there in the center. What you're going to do is paint the bottom half kind of a solidish color, and on the top, you're gonna to do designs. If you see here, it's kind of solidish on the bottom, designs on the top, solidish on the bottom, designs on the top. You get the idea. If when you fold your paper, you wanna fold it in what a lot of you call hot dog or what I call landscape, when you open it up, it's gonna be like this, and if you want, uh, if you fold it this way, then it's gonna look like this. Solid on the bottom, designs on the top, Solid on the bottom, designs on the top, solid on the bottom, clouds and lightning on the top. So as you see here, this, these are your two options for folding your paper. When you're done doing this project, you're gonna go straight back over to the Thanksgiving table to do your designs. Have fun.